After a rough old morning, I'd hope the wind might back off in the evening for a session with Ryan Thipthorpe, a one of Perth's most sought after fish, but sadly it just got stronger. Ryan dedicates many hours to fishing the sound and loves the rough weather. Great. Anyway, the key to finding the fish is to drive around the coral lumps and look for schools on your sounder. Steve Palumbo, Ryan's decky, got the appalling job of waiting on the bow for Ryan to see a school, then in went the anchor and we were away. Well, are you seasick at home yet? Because I reckon I'm about that close myself all over the place. The sea breeze is howling, Ryan. Bring Coven sound. You dragged me all the way out here in a shocking afternoon. For what reason? Pink snapper. This is the time of year. I know it's a bit choppy, but this is the time of year and I reckon we'll get into them. Now, why do you come out when the, when the waves are crashing and the wind's howling? Well, I'll be honest with you, we don't tend to get a lot of fish when it's dead calm. OK, yeah, it makes good boating weather, but uh, at the end of the day, these fish get stirred up. They come into these areas to, in sheltered water and um, they seem to hold up in these sort of windy conditions. Before we lose a lot, I'll just get Ryan to show you this rig, which is excellent. And uh, you've developed it over years of fishing out here. Tell us about it. Yeah, basically I've got two uh, 6 hooks. These are chemically sharpened, so uh, that way they do stick right into the fish. And that's just snelled on, like the Mulloway rig, onto a 60-pound jink eye. And I've got a small ball sinker there. And I've got a small crimp there. That just stops the ball sinker from coming up to the top of the swivel there and sometimes tangling. So that's the rig, Steve. We've got bait here using... Scaly mackerel, slimy mackerel, you love these things. They're good, slimy mackerel and scaly. This one's a slimy one. Both are very, very good baits, very resilient, and uh, they're full of oil. A lot of oil in that, that's what the snapper love. Well, you can't pay that one up, we'll get another one. Now, show yeah. us how you put it on, because you actually put it on so the head goes down first, don't you? That's right, yeah. What I do is basically just put the first hook through behind the head section there, second one just in the midsection, and then just do a half hitch on the tail. And obviously means that you get a better hook up rate when it goes in there using it head first. By far, most of the times this front hook here is well down. Well, it's snapper time, the sun's about to hit the water, we're about to get onto my thing mate. Let's get in them. No fish as sunset approached and the way those winds were looking, I was keeping a close eye on the radio and memorising those emergency channels. Now's the waiting time mate, the sun's just starting to, to head down. What got you into doing this? It's a pretty hardcore way to fish. Look, it's not easy, but I must admit it took me probably at least a year to try to find the fish. And I'll, I'll be honest, I have to thank one person, that's Peter Anderson, about probably three years ago at the boat show. I asked him, I said, what does it take to catch fish out there? And he said, study, get out there, find where the coral is, find where the grounds that the snapper feed on, and sure as eggs, I found the spot, and here I am now, mate, and loving it. Well, you say coral, very few people would actually really realise that there's coral in Coburn Sound, and lots of it. That's right. The, the actual whole um, area of Coburn Sound is full of mud, coral, um, shale, all these sorts of uh, things that the actual snapper do feed on. They actually feed on the actual mud as well, where there's low-lying shale coral on the mud, as well as these shallow banks of Coburn Sound, where there's large lumps up to three, four metres off the ground, full of coral. Oh, Steve! Come on! <laughs> Get out of way, mate. That's, that's a good oh. bit of weight. Talk about keeping it to the last minute. Well, it's dark. And you said as that sun hits the water, they're on, and they're on. That is amazing. It's got some weight. Yeah, it's got some weight just after that sundown. Sometimes I just feed. So I had faith in you, mate. I knew that would be <sighs> Mate, I was getting a bit worried, Steve. I promised you, Snapper. Yes, you've made the fatal mistake that all my other uh, co-presenters make, because he gave me the guarantee of the pink snapper. Has landed yet, though. I've got the net ready. Oh, no. It did me in the reef. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh wow. wow. Now, I'm going to take full responsibility for this, because if, if you get the net too early, it's a jinx. We'll get another one? Yeah, we'll get another one. All right. OK, we found the snapper, but can we catch them? find out after the break. One around the top and giving it a half hitch as well. Look at that, the rod tip's going down. They're having a go, aren't they? They often do that? They do. Uh, mainly after dark, they get quite tentative sometimes. They'll pick up the bait and mouth it for a little while. You get your drag wound right down. You just let them, let them go until they've really got it in. That's right, yeah. My, my drag's done up tight right now, so basically the actual drag uh, itself sets the hook, Steve. Oh, here we go. You got him. 
Yep, you got him. What do you got? Might have a big clump of weed. I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's down fair way. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of line back on it now. It's pretty awesome fishing at night. You can't see anything. All of a sudden the rods go off and you don't know what's going to happen. And all of a sudden the fish will appear. That's what we came here for. And you foul hooked him. You've done one around the top and given it a half hitch as well. <laughs> I better get the net, mate. Hang on. All in all, still a pink snapper. That's just beautiful. OK, here we go. Here's the net. Swim him in. I got him for you, mate. Oh, well done. <laughs> hey! Thanks, Steve. Woo! Pink snapper and Coburn Sound at night. Look He's at the that. man. He's done it tough for us today. But there's the first one on board. That's it. Excellent. Up in the front region here, what we do is lift up a scale. Then just get it underneath there, lift up a scale, push it in, twist it around. And they use this, of course, for research purposes. If he gets caught again, they know where he's been, how long ago he was caught here, and if you hold him up and show everyone, I think that's a pretty impressive effort. How good is that? Uh, Ryan Pitbull, pink snapper master. Hey, he's a little bit eccentric, folks. You would be too if you spent three nights a week fishing for these things. If you put in the effort, you too can come up with a reward like that. You're going to pop him back in, mate? Definitely, no problems at all. That is just so awesome. Look at the Look, blue fins. He's going. He'll get his bearings and go back down. Related to the brim, pink snapper are a fascinating fish to study. And the Shark Bay area alone has three different strains of the species and they don't interbreed. Spawning in Perth takes place during October to February over a number of weeks, but the peak is through October when the sound is closed to all snapper fishing. Just past the ban, the action can be awesome. Ryan, he's got it in his mouth and he's on! He's taking the bait! Oh, oh that's fantastic! I'll just clear this rod out of way, Steve. My Coburn Sound night snapper day Whoa, boom! Oh, I just got some weight. Yeah, mate. Oh, this is good. This is good stuff. This is great stuff! <laughs> They've got some power, don't they? Oh, they do. Oh, you've just got a nice big weed fish. Oh, big head shake. Now, you can't beat these pens for this sort of thing as a drag is just perfect. Once you set it, you know it's not going to let you down. I'll just clear the other rod. I'm a bit nervous, actually. I've been looking forward to this for such a long time, and I've been on at you and on at you. Tell me, take me out, take me out. You have. And uh, I better not let you down by losing the fish now. Oh, look, you deserved a good fish anyway. Ah, I tell you what, we're getting closer, mate. Oh, here it is, Ryan. Here it is. My first night snapper and go, man, Sam. Excellent. I'll just grab the net. He's got that bait well down. I'm going to walk backwards, mate, and give you plenty of room. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. He won't fit in the net. Oh, good work, that. my son. Good fish. <laughs> Well, mate, you told me if I come out with you night fishing for snapper, you'll guarantee fish. The amount of people that have told me that and wanted to come fishing on the show and don't pull the fish, you've done beautifully, mate. Thank mate, you very much. No worries. Good you can't fish. want anything better than that if you're fishing in Perth. Let's get that tag in now. Right there, watch out for those spikes. They're extremely sharp, and in this finger here, I've got a snapper spine in there I can't get out, so do watch yourself. We get to swim this fish now. Isn't it beautiful? Have a quick look at that. Hey, do you think I'm happy? Do you think this is really a bit of a uh, dream come true fish for me? It certainly is. Come over here. We'll pop him back in gently. Oh, look at that in the light, hey? Tell me that's not something to see. Oh, getting his bearings now. It'll be good to go in a minute. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. Woohoo! Mate. Thanks very much for that. What this man doesn't know about Snapper isn't worth knowing. And I'm so privileged to come out here. He writes for our magazine too, so check out his column every month at the Fishing WA Mag. I'm going to go home and get some sleep now because it's been a long day.